In this video, I want to talk about the brightness of the moon. There's a phenomenon with the light whereby every time you double the distance away from the light source, the intensity of the light diminishes to just 25% of what it previously was. So my question is, aren't the photos from NASA allegedly from the moon's surface and to and from the moon way too dark? So if we see the moon as bright as it is from 238,000 miles away, how bright is it from much closer? say as close as NASA claims that they went on their fake moon mission. Well, we'll flesh this out in more detail in a second, but spoiler alert, it should be very, very bright. So bright that this factor alone could single-handedly debunk all of NASA's moon landing photos as faked forgeries. So let's dive in. All right, a little change of pace in this video. I wanted to show something that I think is pretty interesting, pretty thought-provoking, and that is the inverse square law. So it's kind of a weird name, the inverse square law. I'm only going to talk about today the inverse square law when it comes to light and sound intensity. So we see this inverse square proportionality for light and sound intensity because of the mathematics of the sphere. So if we look here at the surface area equation for a sphere, the area equals 4 pi r squared. So that's where the squared distance comes in. The inverse square law for light intensity says that every time you double the distance from the light source, the intensity of the light divides by 4. So it goes down to 25% of what it was at half the distance, whenever you double the distance. So let's look at the surface area for the sphere and think about what happens when the radius changes. In this case, this is the distance away from, say, the speaker or anything emitting sound, somebody's vocal cords, for instance. And the radius in this case is also the distance from a light emitting diode or a light bulb. So we're trying to understand the rate at which the light and the sound dissipate as we move further and further away from the source. So let's think about a couple of examples here. If we double the distance, we can plug in 2r where this r is. And this is going to increase the surface area of the sphere times 4 because 2 squared is 4. If we replace this r by 3r, so 3 times as far away, three times the radius of the sphere, then the surface area of this larger sphere is nine times what it was when the radius was one third. And this continues. So for four, it's 16. For five, it's 25. Basically, we divide the distances and we square it. And that's the multiplying factor to the surface area of the two spheres. We should also point out here, the light intensity and the sound intensity in these examples are inversely proportionate to the surface area of these growing concentric spheres. So if the surface area is nine times more for three times the distance, all that light gets dissipated down to just one ninth of what it was because it has to paint that bigger sphere. Now, the way I think about this is light is sent out in all directions from a light source. So this light bulb here is sending out light in 360 degrees. And we can picture this as concentric spheres getting bigger and bigger as the distance from the source increases. So as the distance increases, the spheres get bigger and bigger, and the light has to dissipate because it's spread out over a much larger surface area of these larger spheres. And the same phenomenon is true with sound, which is why we can put these little pods in our ears, these in-ear headphones, and the volume is much, much quieter than, say, the speakers on your desk. And that's because the distance is so small. And think about it, if your speakers are 10 feet away and compare that to less than an inch for the in-ear monitors. So here's a quick little calculator I made as a spreadsheet. Takes the distance start, the distance end, and then gives us how many times more intense. And if it's a fraction, it's less intense. The equation you can see up here, it's one divided by distance end divided by distance start to the power of two aka squared. So again, this cell here is equal to 1 divided by the distance end divided by the distance start squared. So for our example here, where it has to be 10 feet away for our speakers and less than 1 inch away for our headphones, that would mean our speakers are putting out sound 14,400 times as intense as our headphones. If we perceive them to be the same loudness, our speakers 10 feet away are 14,400 times as intense. So let's look at some of these photos from the moon because this is a practical application of the inverse square law for light intensity. 
Now we've all experienced the phenomenon of looking up in the night sky at the moon shining brightly. And they say the moon is 238,000 miles away. Which I don't concede to. I'd like to see somebody prove this scientifically and mathematically. Send me an email if anybody knows. Timtruth at protonmail.com But check out these photos purportedly taken from the surface of the moon. So how close is the moon in this photo? I mean, obviously the background is going to be further away than up close, but, but let's just say 50 feet. So the distance end is going to be 50 feet and the distance start. So since every mile is 5,280 feet, let's multiply 238,000 miles by 5,280. So a very big number there. So that's 631 trillion, 657 billion. 635 million, 840,000 times as intense. We've all been out in the bright moonlight. It's a very bright object in the sky when it's a full moon. And it lights the place up. It casts shadows. Well, if we were to actually go 238,000 miles to where they say the moon is, to where this light is coming from, it should at that point be trillions of times more intense and its ability to illuminate the surrounding area. According to this calculation, 632 trillion times. By them claiming the moon is 238,000 miles away, they are claiming it's very, very, very bright. Yet their photos don't seem to show it, in my opinion. So here's the Wikipedia page on moonlight for what it's worth. So according to this, it says, the full moon typically provides only about 0.05 to 0.1 lux illumination. And it also says when there's a supermoon viewed around upper culmination from the tropics, the illuminance can reach up to 0.32 lux. So keep in mind, this is the illumination of our environment here on Earth. So a photographer would have 0.05 to 0.1 lux illumination for their photographs, for our eyes to perceive. But it's different from looking straight at the moon or straight at the sun. Lux deals with how much is actually lit up at the target. So since the photos here show the astronauts in the sunlight, let's just use this largest value. 0.1 Lux illumination. All right, so if we take the 0.1 Lux of moonlight from the Earth, so if we account for how light dissipates over a distance using the inverse square law for light intensity, so according to our earlier calculation, 631 trillion times as intense as when viewed from the ground on Earth. And in a second, I'll talk about a key consideration, which is that you don't see the entire moon if you're standing on the moon, if that's even possible. You would see a fraction of it. But I think we're dealing with such huge numbers that this still debunks the photos. So I found this interesting chart here. This is elinetechnology.com. So here they have the different light conditions in the Lux for that light condition. For sunlight, they say the Lux is 107,639. For full daylight, 10,764. And here's the point 0.1 for the moon. And this confirms what we were talking about earlier, the full moon, 0 0.108. So compare the difference here. That's sunlight from the Earth. So when we look at this photography reference and they talk about the Lux of daylight, the Lux of moonlight, they're not talking about looking straight at the sun and seeing how bright it is. They're talking about taking a photo and dealing with the conditions of daylight, right? They're not taking a photo of the sun. And similarly, when they talk about the moonlight, they're talking about taking a photo lit up by the moon. You're taking photos of things on earth lit up by these objects. But using these numbers here, moonlight from earth, 0.1 lux, and then we multiply it by 631 trillion, and we get the moonlight from the moon, 63 trillion, 165 billion, 763,584,000. That's the lux when viewed on the moon. Now compare this with trying to take a photo on the earth during the day, in the daylight. The lux in that case, according to the photography reference that I found, is 107,639, typically. If we divide these two numbers, the moonlight from the moon would be 586 million times the intensity of what it's like in the earth's daylight. But remember, they also say the moon is 238,000 miles away. And if we account for this, when you get closer to the moon, if it is a 238,000 mile journey, it's going to be much, much, much brighter. 
And according to our prior calculation, it'll be trillions and trillions and trillions of times brighter than what we perceive it as from here. And it's pretty bright from here. It'll even be millions and millions and millions of times brighter than what it's like to perceive the sun from Earth. In this measurement here, 63 trillion lux, that comes out to be about 587 million times as bright as daylight. Now, I'm not talking about looking straight at the sun. I'm talking about taking a photo during the day, the daylight environment, and multiplying that by 587 million. So I think it's really interesting to think about the interplay here, given how light works and how it dissipates over distance. It's also very interesting given the fact they say they went to the moon and they show us these photos, which to my eye look totally fake. But the lighting is another key aspect here. Could these photos possibly be real? Given the moon should be trillions of times brighter than what we see from the ground. I mean, think about the comparison with sound. So you had a speaker 238,000 miles away and you turn it up until you can hear it at a decent volume. Then you go stick your ear right into the speaker. What's going to happen? Then you go hold a little microphone up to the speaker. You're not going to be able to capture that sound. It's too loud. Just like if you go to a really bright object and try to use a camera, unless it's a specially built camera, you're going to run into issues. I think it's really interesting. And I definitely want to hear what everybody thinks in the comments. I'm not saying for 100% that this debunks anything, because there are some variables that I haven't accounted for yet. Such as, according to their models and their claims, how much moon should you be able to see in one photo? And would a camera be able to deal with that much light? And would the photos look anything like what we were handed? Those are the key questions. So a big factor here is when we're on the Earth, we're being lit up by the whole face of the moon during a full moon. But if somehow you were able to stand on the moon and take a photo, you're not going to be exposed to the entire brightness of the entire object. It'd be a portion of it. So for the sake of this video, I'm not going to try to figure out what portion of the moon would be in any one photo. I think the numbers that we're dealing with here are so large that the imagery provided to us allegedly from the moon's surface is obviously bunk in my assessment. But I think this is an interesting piece of evidence that we can ask people about. How were they able to capture these photos? When we account for how far they say the moon is away from us, and they should know because they say they traveled there, and we account for the inverse square law, whereby every time you double the distance, the intensity of the light goes down to 25%. It divides by four. So we can reverse engineer what the light should be on the moon, the light conditions they'd have to deal with for the photography. And it doesn't seem to make any sense. And it definitely doesn't seem to match the photos they're giving us purportedly from the moon. And that doesn't even begin to broach all the other topics that people have brought up over the years. The inconsistencies, the impossibilities, the anomalies of the purported photos. But I wanted to come at it with this new angle. I've been thinking a lot about the inverse square law. And I want to hear what you think. So if you crack the code, let me know. And here are some other videos I found on this subject. I found it interesting to hear from other perspectives and see what others have concluded. Now, I can't verify all of their calculations and claims, but I do think this is a huge issue that people don't think about. So let's get the conversation going in the comments. Okay, let's have a little bit of fun using the inverse square law. Uh, how bright would the moon be if you were standing on it? So here's, I'm gonna light up a piece of paper with the moon and uh, take a look. So I couldn't find any paper, so I wrote my name on a piece of paper towel. And uh, as you can see, with the moonlight, I can read my name perfectly fine. Now let's compare it to a regular light. Okay, here's a big building. Let's make it dark in here. Okay, I mounted a 60 watt light bulb to the wall. I used a 60 watt because everybody knows what a, how bright a 60 watt light bulb is. And about 50 feet away, here's what the sheet of paper looks like. Okay, so the moon one is on the right and the uh, regular light bulb is on the left. So you can see they're pretty similar. Now, don't get your panties in a bunch. I know you should be using a light meter and all that stuff. Wait till the end. It's not going to matter. Okay, so the moon is 1,256,640,000 feet from the Earth. Now, a 60-watt light bulb at 50 feet is roughly the same brightness as a full moon. You can read the paper about the same. So we're going to use the inverse square law. Okay, so we're going to take 50 times uh, 
25 million, and that puts us at 1 billion 1, 250, which is pretty close. Now we're going to square this number. So 25 million squared is 625 trillion. So now we've got to take 625 trillion and times it by 60 watts, and we get 3.7 gajillion, bazillion, zillion plus 16. I don't even, this number is so big that I think my calculator exploded. So you can see there's a huge problem here, right? So let's just call it one to one, okay? Let's just go one, one to one ratio. Instead of like one to five bazillion, gajillion, bazillion, bazillion, jillion, we're just gonna go one to one. And let's see what it looks like. Okay, here's our little moon landing guy. Okay, let's land him on the moon at one to one, 60 watts. Does that look normal to you? Is that what the moon landing looked like? Come on. The moonlight on the moon's surface would be intensely blinding based on the official numbers of the heliocentric model. The intensity of light is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. This means that as the distance from a light source increases, the intensity of light is equal to a value multiplied by 1 over d squared. The full moon, which is supposed to be reflecting sunlight, has an illuminance up to 1 lux on the Earth's surface. Look at this diagram and imagine that the light source is the moon and you're standing on the Earth's surface there on the bottom right corner. Each step higher you go, the moonlight gets more intense. So, based on the official distance to the moon and a one lux strength of moonlight on the Earth's surface, the Apollo astronauts would have experienced many thousands of times more illuminance on the moon's surface than direct sunlight on Earth. Every photo of the moon's surface would have been impossible and washed out. Now, a bonus question that I think will yield some fruitful results. So think about all of the bright stars that we see in the sky. Now look up how far away they say those stars are. Maybe get an app on your phone and see if you can find out what the star's name is. Look up how far they say that star is. And then contemplate how much light would that have to be putting off to be seen at this distance, at this brightness, given the inverse square law. We're talking massive numbers. This is an extremely interesting angle to consider.